please stand. Good morning. Good morning. The service of Holy Eucharist Rite 1 begins in your bulletins or on page 323 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Together let us say the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who has prepared for those who love thee such good things as pass man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee that we, loving thee in all things and above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on even the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing from these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The proper psalm 
appointed for the sixth Sunday of Easter is Psalm 98. We will read responsively by the whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has yes, he won for, for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers, he remembers his, his mercy and faithfulness, faithfulness to the, the house, house of Israel. Israel. And, and all the ends of the earth have seen, seen the, the victory of our God. Lord. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands, lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the, the Lord, Lord with the harp, with the harp and, and the voice of song. song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the earth and the peoples with equity. A reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that con conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing but I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from the Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Today's theme is centered in love and joy. What better theme than for Mother's Day? <laughs> uh, as I'll say at the announcement time, but today, we, we give a red rose to all women, all girls, uh, but especially our mothers. <laughs> and uh, what a wonderful image of love that God has given us. Today we are continuing with the theme of the vine and the branches. And last week I presented to you uh, another orchid. And uh, it's an orchid that Caroline, my wife, has been preparing, not preparing, but taking care of. And she really knows how to do it well. I mean, uh, there was, I think, one little flower bloom on it. And I talked about the leaves and the branch and the beautiful orchid. So, uh, Mary, you're just going to die when you see this. Uh, Mary Guthrie gave us an orchid last week. And I was meaning to take it home so that Caroline can take care of it. And I kept it in my office. And this morning, uh, I thought it seemed to be uh, lowering the flowers. So I raised it up and, uh, and pulled it right out there. And so there's the flowers, but the stem is still in place. And so we will continue to water it because I'm not sure these will last in their beauty all that long. So please accept my apology. Uh, it really does go with the theme of the importance of remaining connected to the branches. <laughs> the branch is connected to the vine. Uh, because uh, look what happens when the rector gets a hold of a plant and it all falls apart. So uh, we'll just keep that image right there in its beauty. And thank you, you're, you're sweet. And I think they do grow, grow back. So uh, Michael Curry, I've shared this story, our presiding bishop uh, shared, shared with the clergy of Wyoming before we, before we ordained or they ordained our new bishop here. And he talked about how the difference between WWJD and WDJD, what we coined as a different term. And uh, people ask that question, WWJD is what would Jesus do? And I've talked about this in a few other sermons, but uh, so people sort of project uh, and think about uh, Jesus, and then what would he do? And, and the presiding bishop said, because I pushed him on it, I said, you know, everyone, every church would, would preach love, but why is it that I go to churches and I don't experience that? I sort of experience judgment instead. And they would probably look at me and say, well, we're not sure if your love is right either. And, uh, and so he said, well, instead of WWJD, uh, consider WDJD, what did Jesus too. And he said, really the only way we know of that is to read the Gospels. Those are literally the words of Jesus. And of course, the Old Testament pointed in the direction of the Messiah. And the rest of the New Testament talks about how the church developed beyond uh, Jesus's life literally here on earth. So he said, WDJG, what did Jesus do? So we continue to look at the, the gospel today, which is what we'll, what we'll do. And we stand for the gospel. That's one of the reasons, because our Messiah, Jesus, is the center of who we are in our faith. We, uh, we believe in Jesus. We have faith in Jesus uh, as our Messiah and our Savior. And so that's why we do stand for that, particularly. So Jesus is continuing his farewell discourse, uh, as I talked about last week continuing his I am statements. I'm this, I'm this, I am the vine. God is the vine maker. 
He's the one that makes it all. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Don't separate from the vine. Don't separate from Jesus because then we're on our own and it makes no sense. Last week, um, Jesus taught that there needs to be pruning involved as well. So if we're not living in that life of love, if we're harboring grievances against other people or if we're resentful or, or just plain being mean to people, then, then, then really that part of us needs to be pruned. Otherwise, that can take over our lives, right? It's that sense of a ball and chain. You could do all the love you want, but if you're just holding resentments in your life, that can just drag you along and really could cut you off from the vine as well. So those things need to be pruned so that we can bear fruit. And Jesus talked about the importance of bearing fruit for the glory of God and not for our personal desires. Remember that one little scripture last week where Jesus said, I'll give you whatever you want if you ask in, in God's name. And a lot of people think, well, you know, I want this and I want this and I want this. And that's not the point. The point is to give glory to God in everything that we ask of the Lord. So this week is the second half of that teaching that we heard in the gospel. And what we find in, in Jesus' teaching is the unity, as one commentator put it, the unity and the mutuality that love makes possible, symbolized by the unity of the vine and the branches, and that leads to full joy. So he's making the connection between love and full joy, full contentment, or, or a sense of completeness in the Lord. And we'll fall short of that if we're living into things that are not connected to the vine. Will, they'll always pull us away. And so Jesus is connecting love and joy. So as we look at the scriptures, keeping in mind that image of our moms, think about what a mom does. You have a child. You nurture, you grow that child inside your belly. God is the vine maker. God's the one who's really growing it. And then you nurture that child and then you feed it more and you take care of it, hopefully with the help of others and hopefully with the help of a dad, but it's primarily mom, right? Particularly early on. And if mom's not given that milk, uh, then, then the baby won't be nursed. So there's certain things that happen. And you know what's interesting? I thought of this uh, in my sermon uh, preparation that uh, w what happens as you get older? Well. I remember my parents, particularly my mom, who was the one that cooked, and I remember 6.30 p.m. Every night at 6.30 p.m., we were to be at that dinner table. Now, if we couldn't be there, we had to let mom know we couldn't be there. But, uh, and that would be okay, but if we were just out and about and 6.45, we come rolling in, and dad had to be there at 6.32, uh, the image is she continues she continued to nourish us, right, as our lives grow on until we went out into the world, college and job and all that. Now I'm married and we continue to try and have family dinners and pray together and so forth. So there is that beautiful image of the nurturing of moms as we celebrate moms today particularly. So as we delve, delve into the scriptures more, we find that uh, Jesus talks about initially the three-part connection of love. So the Father, or God, loves Jesus. Jesus loves us because of the love that God put in Jesus. And Jesus loves God as well. So there's this three-part connection happening where all of those need to be in sync with each other. If God decides to remove love, it doesn't make sense because God is love, but it would fall apart. And if Jesus isn't loving us, then it would fall apart. And if we aren't loving Jesus and God, it falls apart as well. So he talks about that. We are supposed to remain in God's love. That is the what. What are we supposed to do? And in verse 10, he tells us how. So he doesn't leave us hanging out there like, okay, you guys figure it out. He says, uh, obey Jesus' commandments or obey my commandment. 
uh, just as Jesus has done. So you're, we're supposed to follow those commandments of Jesus. Why? And he tells us this. So that Jesus' joy may be in us and so, so that our joy may be complete. So what moms are trying to do in our lives, right? Moms are trying to raise us up so that we can launch forward and hopefully share love with other people. And so we can celebrate our moms today, hopefully the, the love that they try to give us as we launch out. Uh, and that is what Jesus is talking about here. So, so if we love others, then, then that joy will be complete in us, and hopefully others will experience that as well, that contentment, that com completeness. Why? Because he wants the best for us. And then Jesus goes back to the command again, in case we forget it. Uh, this is my command, that we love one another as I have loved you. So it's not just about God loving us, Jesus loving God, us loving God, but we are then supposed to love others. And this is what the whole thing is centered around. This is what Jesus talks about again and again. Is, uh, and then the church comes in and they judge him for it and they judge others for being this way and that way or not this way. And Jesus says it's about love. It's about joy and completeness. And he didn't say this, but look at your mom, <laughs> right? That's what we can say today. Love one another as I have loved you. How? Well, then he gives us that extreme how in our lives. And that is the greatest way is to lay down our life for our friends. Can you imagine a mom who would say to a little baby, well, you, you go figure it out. And then if the baby gets into trouble or the young child gets into trouble, into trouble if she were to say, yeah, you, you fend for yourself. No, the mom really lays down her life for her kids. That's the, that's the intention there to take care of your children. And of course, we have that image of Jesus who's going to be laying down his life for all of us soon. This is the farewell discourse right before he goes into that place where eventually he'll be crucified. So we're getting a, a reenactment of the story or a reteaching of the story we just had. Why? So that there would be a deep bond, a friendship instead of servants. <clears throat> so this is the final part of what Jesus teaches today which kind of throws us off a bit. Everything is about being a servant, right? We talk about serving others, and, and then Jesus turns the teaching over. He says, you know, we're to be friends here now, not just serving others, because friends involve mutual love. Can you imagine a friend, a friendship that, where there's just one person giving? No, friendship involves both loving each other, and so Jesus gives this beautiful image of friendship where, where that love is, is happening consistently. So one last word about Jesus' teaching, and this is his final one before he goes to where life gets very difficult. Um, notice how in verses 16 and 17, he says, it was, it was Jesus' action first, not ours. That's an important piece. A lot of times we think, well, we just have to do better and we have to love better. And, but remember that it is God working through us and our openness, our faith in God, our faith in Jesus that, that allows us to receive that. It is God fueling that love. And then he talks about going to bear fruit. Alert, the father said, or he says again, the father will give us whatever we ask in his name. He says this the second time, and it's the danger is the prosperity gospel here. And that is, as I said last week, I want a boat, I want an airplane, I want a Bugatti, I talked about that. It's not about what I want. <laughs> That's not the point of this. It's about giving glory to God and having a friendship where there's mutual love. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd end with one last quote uh, from Nelson Mandela, which is particularly powerful. And I saw, I was reminded of it again this week. Um, and it says, before Nelson Mandela left prison, <clears throat> and because of his stance on a, apartheid, um, 30 years in prison, he stated, 
As I stand before the door to my freedom, I realize that if I do not leave pain, anger, and bitterness behind me, I will still be in prison. So what a powerful image of love. Don't let non-love grip our hearts and lead us. And so uh, take that as we move forward today. Celebrate our moms. Hopefully take care of our plants better than I did. And always keep connected to the vine. Amen. And now let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. It can be found on page three of your bulletins or page 326 of the Book of Common Prayer. And let us proclaim it together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue with the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for St. Andrew's Church in Matitsi, and we pray for the Diocese of Calabar in Nigeria. 
Your own prayers and petitions may be added at this time. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life, especially Dorothy Gordon. In thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Mark and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. After a moment of silence, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So with you. Peace. Peace. Peace of the Lord. And as you finish the piece, you're welcome to be seated. And welcome as we worship today. We're blessed that you're here, and we're especially glad if you are a guest or a visitor, either here or online on the camera. So. Uh, and if you are, there are little cards in the pews. They're welcome cards, and you're welcome to fill those out. Um, if you're at home, feel free to contact us with any questions you may have. Or if you wanted to give us your information, we can get you connected on our, our uh, mailings or anything you'd like. So uh, There's also a place on the cards here for prayer requests, and uh, you can also write, write down altar flower dedications, or write them on the lectern in the back of the church. We have that back out now. So uh, a couple of other announcements. One is the Day of Giving is happening this Saturday, and the Youth Day of Giving is Friday night, and there are some more flyers in the back of the church. If you'd like to participate or learn more, you can certainly Google it as well. We have a junior youth group that's starting up uh, next week. That's for fourth through sixth graders. So you can learn more about that to talk with our youth director. And we, have, uh, we are working with USI, Unaccompanied Student Initiative, and CFD, and the police department, and fire department, a whole bunch of organizations to help um, burn the mortgage they're talking about. Um, and so uh, it's to raise money for unaccompanied student initiative. And as I shared last week, St. Mark's, uh, the vestry applied for two grants and we've received them, or we are in the process of receiving them. Uh, $25,000 will be going to USI and $25,000 will be going to Grace for Two Brothers to help with suicide prevention. And so um, that is a great celebration. Um, of the grant that we received, or will be receiving from the Foundation for the Episcopal Diocese of Wyoming. And a reminder that all women get to take a rose afterwards, so uh, from our usher back there, 
Uh, watch for the little thorns on the side. They have a few of those still. And we especially celebrate our mothers today. So, All right, are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? And if so, please come forward at this time. All right. We'll continue with the offertory, and we don't pass the plates, but there's a basket in the back of the church, and as you leave, you're welcome to put uh, any offering you may have in that basket labeled offering. Instead, we have the Sonoma Trio with you, uh, with us today, and they will be offering uh, this gift to us today. What a blessing you all are to be here. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, this offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand. The service continues on page four of your bulletins with the offertory words, and then page five with the Eucharist. In the Book of Common Prayer, it's page 333. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Let's keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. For communion today, um, we invite you to come forward to the altar rail where, where I'll give you the bread uh, just standing up and then you can go off to the side here because there's not as much room at the crossing. So we're not going to have people kneel yet uh, all next to each other, but you can come forward, uh, receive the bread only still, uh, which we believe is the fullness of Christ in the bread and the wine. And then you can make your way around as we used to do. <laughs> if you are not able to come up, then we'll come to you. If you'd like a blessing only as you come up, uh, put your arms around your, over your chest and that will cue us that you'd like a blessing only. But you are welcome to come forward at this time.
The post-communion prayer continues on page six of your bulletins, post, uh, page six or on page 339 of the Book of Common Prayer. And let us pray it together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries, the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost we all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. A reminder that our ushers will dismiss people uh, from the back of the nave forward um, after the dismissal. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Airlifted to Swedish Memorial. <laughs> 